tardigrades are in the news again. Those microscopic, kind of weird crosses between a caterpillar and the Pillsbury Doughboy are always getting airtime. We know they can withstand extreme temperatures, even the vacuum of space, but are they also the first creature to have become quantum entangled? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles. Welcome to Spin Up Science. Here we look at the research behind big science headlines and explore how they might change tomorrow's world. Last month, on December 15th, 2021, scientists from universities across Europe and Asia claimed to have done it, applied the rules of quantum mechanics usually confined to particles and subatomic scales to living creatures. In a paper they published in a non-peer-reviewed journal, Archive, they claimed to have entangled three tardigrades after they were frozen to almost absolute zero. That's minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit, close to the coldest temperature in the universe. Tardigrades, also known as water bears, or my personal favorite, moss piglets, are known for surviving incredible conditions. They can be found almost anywhere in the planet, but they prefer moist habitats such as moss, hence the name. Researchers have involved them in many experiments, testing their survival skills, exposing them to temperatures as low as minus 200 degrees, radiation and pressures up to six times the pressure of the deepest part of the ocean. They can even survive in a vacuum. What makes them so amazingly indestructible is their ability to expel more than 95% of the water in their bodies, curling up into a dehydrated cylinder and waiting it out until outside conditions become a little bit more habitable. Now, researchers have gone even a step further. Next to exposing them to even colder temperatures and higher pressures than most moss piglets have ever survived, they tested if a frozen tardigrade could enter a quantum entangled state and then be revived. The scientific team behind this work have claimed that they have succeeded in doing so, but some of the scientific community is a little bit skeptical that that's the case. First off, let's start with what is quantum entanglement. I did a video on this with one of the cameramen from Cloverfield about seven years ago on how entangled photons are actually produced if you want to check it out. But here are the basics again. Quantum entanglement is the idea that two particles can be linked in such a way that if you do a measurement on one particle, you automatically do it to the other one as well. They are fundamentally linked by some common trait, a unique quantum state that means that you only need to measure one particle to immediately know exactly what the other one is up to, regardless of whether they are sitting right next to each other or separated at other sides of the universe. This process is the heart of future quantum technologies like the quantum computer. What Einstein described as spooky action at a distance is a unique feature of quantum mechanics which is lacking in our classical macroscopic world. There are a bunch of different ways that you can entangle particles. One that I used quite commonly within the lab, for example, was to create two entangled photons, particles of light, by shooting one photon into a special type of nonlinear crystal. In a process called spontaneous parametric down conversion, that photon, that particle of light, is split into two entangled photons, entangled by conservation of energy, momentum, and orbital angular momentum. By, for example, measuring the angular momentum of one of those exiting photons, you can immediately know about the second one also. As another example, in trapped ion quantum computers, the qubit in this sort of a system is stored in the stable electronic state of each ion, and this state can be primed or read from by firing a laser at the system, causing it to emit a photon. By coupling lasers across multiple trapped ions, the photons these ions release can become entangled. These systems can be built into complex networks of entangled qubit systems, ultimately allowing you to do some form of computation. The scientists in the tardigrade experiment attempted to create entanglement by cooling tardigrades they found in roof gutters in Denmark to almost absolute zero, the coldest any tardigrade has ever been, and then placing an individual tardigrade between two capacitor plates of a superconductor circuit that makes up a qubit of another quantum system. When the tardigrade came in contact with the qubit, here qubit A, it shifted the qubit's resonant frequency. The tardigrade qubit hybrid was then coupled to a second qubit, so that the two qubits become entangled, resembling a three-part entangled system. But here is where many physicists have already publicly announced that they don't think this is really actually the case, or that the tardigrades actually entered the quantum world. While this paper has not yet been peer-reviewed, early responses from the scientific community have been pretty critical. Douglas Natison, department chair of physics at Rice University in Texas, wrote that the experiment did not entangle a tardigrade with a qubit in any meaningful sense. There are two primary kind of counter arguments being put forward by most physicists at the moment. The first is that without the tardigrade, you can measure entangledness of qubit A against qubit B, and you can do something useful with that information. 
by adding a tardigrade into the mix, you don't necessarily gain any further appreciable information out of the system. You can't measure the entanglement between qubit B and the tardigrade, only qubit B and the tardigrade qubit A system. Here the problem is that this is kind of equivalent to saying that the qubit is also entangled with the silicon chip that it's sitting on, or with the laboratory that the experiment is taking place in, or with the planet Earth that the experiment is taking place in. On. At some stage you just have to stop expanding the scope at which you are saying entanglement is occurring because it kind of stops being meaningful. And this is related to the second counter argument. What we have here feels a little bit more like a classical effect. When the tardigrade is cooled, it shrinks down, losing most of its mass, and starts acting like a dielectric. It's a small object with some remaining frozen water within it, and water is a polar molecule. Bringing any small dielectric object close to one of these qubits would affect its resonance in pretty much the same way, and we know that just from the laws of electromagnetism, which is a classical effect. From my point of view, I kind of think about it like this. There's absolutely an external object in this qubit A, qubit B system that is influencing its behavior. In theory, through this experiment, you can prove whether the external influencing object, tardigrade, is there or not. Is that entanglement? I would say slightly, but it, if it is, it's very, very, very weak because it doesn't really show you any meaningful quantum property, any quantum link between these ideas. In fact, I'd argue at the moment, it's probably better not to refer to this as entanglement because entanglement as a word, I think carries a bit more weight to it than just this kind of correlatedness of properties, even if that correlatedness is happening at the quantum realm. This absolutely, I agree, is a little bit of semantics, but when you're trying to understand the universe, at some point, you do need to just be strict about the definitions that you're using so everyone can kind of agree on the foundational knowledge and then try and build upon that. Either way, whichever side of the fence you sit on, we will see the new headlines when the paper has gone through the peer review process. I'm curious to see what the conclusion will be. What we can all say is that tardigrades are even hardier than we thought before. Out of the three of them that were frozen, one was successfully brought back to life more than 17 days after being first put into that extreme cold state. Even if it's not the first quantum entangled animal, being frozen to almost zero Kelvin and coming back to life with all the internal biology still intact, to me, is impressive and worth celebrating. But I'd like to know what you think. Leave an answer down below in the comments section. If you like this video, check out my older video on quantum key distribution. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.